Okay, so hole four, first of, I believe, four par fives right here at Astro right, Creek. Right, right. All right, so tees are right over here, pond here, and I think you called this a classic S design is what right. you described it as. Yep. Maybe since we have a prop handy, what does that look like? Yeah, sure. Um, like, like you said, the tees are here, we've got this big pond, and then the hole swings to the left and it swings back to the right. But this is a, a kind of a classic architectural style. Pete Dye uh, used this a lot. Pete was one of the greatest architects. But if I was to describe it here in the sand, we have this pond that's right here that right. would sit in this general location. We have the tees that are here. And then up here at the second lane area, we have a, a grass face that sits on this angle. And then the green sits like this on this angle. So if I was to put the fairway in here, here's the S that I was talking about. Gotcha. It sweeps in and sweeps around like that to the green. So green here. So I'm asking a golfer off the tee to hit over this pond, to carry the pond, or play out in this direction. So this shot, first shot is like this, second shot is like this, and then into the green. Into the S. Yeah, Understood. so it's just, it's just, it's angle after angle, and then we continue to ask a golfer to challenge that angle to give them the best angle or the best approach for the next shot. As we're walking along the fairway, Chris, you know, something that's been striking to me on a number of these holes, like this, I believe, is what, about the third tee on yes, this? Yes. So we're spanning from all the way back there, all the way up through. What's that, what's that range between five tee locations? On, on this hole, it's a par five, so it's about 250 yards from the, the most back back tee to the most forward tee. The two forward tees are kind of floating in the fairway. Um, but the, you know the, we're standing at the third tee, so it, the, the benefit of that in my mind is the scalability of the golf hole. You know I can I can cater or challenge a really good golfer from the back tee. That angle is a lot stronger over the pond versus these forward tees. You know there's less pond to deal with or almost no pond, and then we can move the beginning golfer, people that just want to have fun. Uh, younger people, older people, we can move them up to those forward tees where they can enjoy the golf course. So, so to me, it's really playable. Yeah, very very playable. And to me, it's like a it's like a ski hill. We got the bunny hill and we got the black diamonds. And the black diamonds are back there. The bunny hill is up here, and it's just an opportunity to get people to enjoy the game more. Uh, and together. Yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you absolutely. can have a range of golfers playing right, the same hole right, together right. and be comfortable yep, doing that. Yep. All right. So Chris. My second shot lands here. There's that grass face you were describing to us back at the tee. Right. What's the play? So, so from here, you know, an obscured shot to the green. This grass face doesn't allow you to see the green, doesn't allow you to know the exact depth. So not the ideal position, but if we walk up here on top of this face, so now fairway below us, there's the green, so this is the ideal shot as well as the ideal angle into the screen. The further left that you challenge this grass face, the better the angle is into the green. Your ball hits this, kicks down toward the green, but most importantly you can visually see the green surface. You can see where the pin is and um, you know, judge the depth a lot better sure. than being down there where it's blind. And look, because that's an interesting look, I haven't seen this kind of sloping before, so let's head over to the green and we'll okay. talk, about, talk that about that a little, little bit. bit yeah. Alright, great. This green, a little different than the previous two we saw. What do you call this, the, the kind of the slope, the, the style here, and how do you play it? Right, um, so this green is more con concave, meaning that you know the, the center is lower, the outside edges are higher. And the benefit of this green really to me is playability. It allows the golfer to use these slopes to funnel the ball back toward the green or, or toward the cupping areas. So you know, behind these bunkers we have a, a ridge, a landform that runs down to the green, Behind us over here, we have that same ridge that runs down. So it's again, all these balls are getting c collected or funneled back toward the, you know, the, the intended target. Gotcha. And so, what's your ideal pin position on a green like this? You know, there's there's several that are in this area. The the slope over here on the left is is steeper, so we won't put, put too many pins over there. But this whole area is very uh, puttable or cuppable. But then the unique part about this green is we got this central ridge. Right. So from that ridge, everything is coming this way, slope-wise. But behind that ridge, everything is falling off and falling to the back left. So it makes those back cups very interesting in the regard that you know if you're here, that's a really uh, you know challenging putt to get back to that back spot. But at the same time, you know if if the pin is back there, you carry this bunker over here. We got the slope 
that's feeding the balls and the green feet, you know, slope is feeding it towards Absolutely. the pin back there. So to me, that's what makes it really playable. Is every green like this? No, but several are like this where they're collecting shots and pulling them toward the center of the target. All right, Chris, well, really appreciate your time today walking us through these holes. Amazing difference what four months have made. Four months from now, we do this again. What do you, uh, you know, what are the kind of those milestones you see, say, February, March from now? Right, right. good question. Um, so as we, like, these, these four holes are done or three holes are done, we're proceeding down number five, which is over here, five, six, seven, and eight. So those are the next holes that we're finishing. Come February, though, like, we'll be completely done in January, all grassed out. And at that time, we're really just letting the golf course mature, letting the grass grow to the point that it's playable for, you know, for golf. Mm -hmm. um, but we should be wrapped up in February and again, like getting ready for that grand opening uh, sometime yeah. in, the, in uh, And hopefully spring, spring, summer, that's happening. And in four months from now, we may even have some homes under construction yes. as well. Yeah. So I uh, might sneak that into the video because uh, we're excited. We're looking forward to opening the community spring, summer of 2023. And uh, all the work you guys and all the teams out here are doing, it's awesome. We're excited about it. And I thank you so thanks, much for your time, thanks man. Thanks so much, John. Have a Appreciate great day. It. All right. And uh, we'll you. catch up all next right. year, I guess. Yeah, thank you. All right, be all right. well, man. All right.